the students, uh, welcome and thank you for tuning in to another video of Stacks and Dynamics with me, Dr. Lyle Zobi. We are going to, um, in this video, solve, uh, or not, before solving the problem, we are going to present the steps that uh, we will be taking in order to determine the forces in a member of a truss using the me method of sections. So we're going to list the steps, the important steps. We will talk a little bit about them and um, some tricks. And then we, in the following video, we're going to solve a problem um, in, a, in which we're going to determine the forces uh, in, um, in the members of a truss using the method of sections. If you recall from the previous video, uh, which is the first video of this lecture, uh, we talked about the importance or the need for the method of sections in finding uh, forces in members that they are found in large um, you know, structures. Um, and such as the transmission, you know, uh, towers. Let's talk about the steps, and it's very important to follow them uh, sequentially, and um, to be clear about what what we do. We need uh, in every step. We will need to do in every step. So here's the thing. Uh, step one, you need to decide uh, how you need to cut the truss, and uh, this is based on multiple factors. Uh, it could be based where you need uh, to determine the force. So as I mentioned in the previous example, if we have this truss uh, and look at the schematic on to your left, if we are interested in finding either the force on member CB, CG, or FG, we make a cut actually in this area. If we are interested in another place, let's say if we are interested in the... Uh, force on CF, uh, then I can create a uh, cut like this, right? So it's it depends on where do you need to determine the forces. Another uh, criteria is where the total number of unknowns does not exceed three. So and this is very important that your section should not pass through more than three unknowns, three uh, actually uh, members. It could pass through more than three members, but those are special cases and we're going to talk about them later on. So try to find which member you want to find the force in and you do set the section there and make sure that there are three so that we have we don't exceed three unknowns in general. So that's step one. Step two, actually you need to decide uh, which side of the cut truss uh, will be easier to work with. And this is de this depends on the number of unknowns that they've found, uh, and also uh, which comes from the uh, support reactions. So I would always use the uh, you know the side that has the least number of support reactions because that will reduce the number of unknowns to use. So if you did the cut here, you can tell that uh, you have a lot of unknowns on this side as opposed to this side. So I would probably start working here in this place. Step three, if required, uh, you need to find the necessary support reactions by drawing a free body diagram of the entire truss and applying the equations of equilibrium. Now, if you can see here in our in the example that we did and we did the cut in it, uh, if I want to analyze uh, this part or section of the truss, I don't need to find the uh, uh, support reaction forces dy, dx, and ex. Uh, but it's a always a good idea to find the support reaction forces first uh, and the support re you know, uh, the reactive forces first before analyzing any truss. So it's good to draw the free body diagram of the entire truss and find the uh, support reactions. Uh, and the reactive forces caused by these support reactions first, and then you start to analyze your uh, system. I, I would see that I would say that this is a very important step, uh, and we're going to uh, apply it when we solve problems together, uh, online and also in person. Okay, so after identifying the support reactive reaction forces, so what's the following step? Step four you need to draw a free by diagram of the selected section uh, part uh, of the truss or the cutted part of the truss, something similar to this. You need to make sure that you have your external forces on this part. And as we assumed, you will initially 
uh, assume all members uh, to be in tension, which means that the forces are going out of the, you know, uh, joints. Right. So that's that's our assumption. Uh, upon solving the answer, if the answer were positive, which means that our assumption is correct. If they're negative, it should be in the other uh, direction. Sometimes you could tell actually which one is intention and compression. But my advice is always assume the force is coming out of the joint that's intention, and then you build your analysis around that assumption. And if it's positive, good. If it's negative, it means it's in the opposite direction. That will simplify the analysis, and you don't have to guess. Right, and you don't have to spend time guessing. All right, after doing that, uh, the final step will be actually applying the scalar equations of motion of equilibrium to select uh, to the selected cut. Remember, we said we need to find we would probably we can solve for three unknowns using the section method. That's another another difference from the joint. In the joint method, you can solve for only up to two unknowns. In the section method, you can solve for up to three unknowns. So I need to construct three occasions of equilibrium. So we can uh, use uh, any of the pairs that we um, discussed or are presented in the textbook. Uh, so you can find the summation of, fo of forces on the x-axis, summation of forces on the y-axis, and summation of moments around an ar arbitrary you know, point that you can select. And they should all equal to zero, right? And that's, this is, this is one, two, and three, and then you can solve for three unknowns. Um, please note that it's possible that you could select the section and you can take uh, careful attention to the, your analysis to write one occasion to solve for one, one unknown uh, directly, and that's not uh, uncommon. So keep looking for the advantage of these shortcuts when you do the, the analysis. And those are the five steps that we are going to use in our uh, the method of sections. And in the following video, we're going to solve a problem together and to apply all these steps and um, so that you can see exactly how is this uh, done. Thank you for watching. Until next video. Bye.